There's a difference between appreciating something and being attached to something because you derive your sense of identity from it. This, by the way, also applies to possessions because in a way you could look at the body as a, something that you have rather than something as you are. Although I've said somewhere in a book, just as a meditative practice, you are your body, but not the physical body. When you go deeper into the body, that's another story. But really the physical body, you are not the physical body. You have, even language knows that when you when people use language, the, in all languages, uh, I assume, people refer to my body. And they say, I have a body. I have a good-looking body. I have an ugly body, whatever. But they say they have a body. So they must have realized language has maybe a little bit of wisdom has crept into language. And so you say, I have a body, which means you are not the body. So anyway, everybody says they have a body. So they are not the body. So, but to appreciate something that you have, whether it's a body that you have, or some kind of object that you have, or some kind of ability that you have, uh, whatever it may be, to appreciate that is fine. To to like it, to, you love it, but no, not in an, a deeply attached sense that um, the, you do not, to appreciate something is different from deriving partly your sense of identity from it. Let's say you have a nice, an object that you own, uh, uh, and you perhaps it's been with you for a long time, or not, and and you, it looks nice. It you, it has quality to it, perhaps whatever it may be, uh, and you appreciate it. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. So your body, if you happen to have a lovely body, you appreciate it. You look after it too. You do your best to keep it going through good nutrition and exercise. Nothing wrong with that. And even to say, oh, I look great. But in a superficial sense, not that knowing that it's not going to last, nothing is going to last, everything will leave you or you leave it. Uh, and uh, to have, to appreciate something is actually an important thing. It, you can incorporate it into your practice of Gratitude, which is a, a a spiritual practice strongly linked to present moment awareness. On this, gratitude for is to appreciate the goodness of things, whether you own them or not. You can have you can walk off a walk and have gratitude for the beautiful things, that's the flowers, the trees the sky, the sunshine. Gratitude doesn't necessarily mean thank you for this. It doesn't necessarily involve words. It's just to give it attention and to appreciate it. It's aliveness or it's beauty. You can have gratitude for the flowers that are here, which means you give, you appreciate it, the goodness of so many things in this world, but you are not attaching yourself or using it in the service of your sense of self. So there's a difference. Um, I have a, I have a car. Well, I talked about my car that I had when I lived in England. I had this Lada, beauty, lovely car. Uh, and I loved it. I had gratitude for it. People laughed at it, and I was sitting driving. Sometimes people say, ah, ha, ha, a ladder. <laughs> and I realized the people who are driving this car are either relatively poor or they have no ego. <laughs> uh, 
in my case, both was true, both applied. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 17 years ago, I was no longer poor and I bought a luxury car and I still have it and I'm going to keep it until either it dies or I die. <laughs> And I love it just as much as the Lada. It's just, it's love. It just embodies quality. It's, don't use it that much, but it's still there. And when I go down, I greet it, say hello. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems almost that things, even so called inanimate things, seem to almost respond there. It's almost as if you could sense you. The, the weird thing happened when I left England. I sold my lad. A friend of mine needed a car. It, I sold it, not very much. Uh, and this car had never broken down while I had it. Um, and it was a month after he started using it, it broke down completely and couldn't even be repaired. <laughs> Very strange. It, uh, the car was not happy, it seems. <laughs> so, Yes, the appreciation of things, the a gratitude for something that is the, in their field of awareness, whether you own it or not, becomes secondary. There are people, of course, who tell you, I've met some very wealthy people who tell me I have this wealth, but I'm not attached to anything anymore. And whether or not this is true, uh, you can't really know until you experience loss. So if you say, okay, I have a um, Ferrari, I don't have a Ferrari, it's not, that's not my type of car, but uh, somebody says, I have a Ferrari tester, testos, tester, testosterone, testarossa. <laughs> um, uh, uh, <laughs> I have to get the name right. Uh, but I'm not identified with it at all. And so, but, you, but of course, you have this car and it's red. It's red and it's very noisy. It's meant to be extremely noisy because it attracts attention. Everybody looks for you, the drive. But I'm not attached to it, I'm not <laughs> it at all. Uh, and the, then one day you come back and somebody has scratched your car. Uh, and, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> or somebody, it's gone completely, somebody stole it. <laughs> you were not attached? No. <laughs> So when you say I'm not attached, you may not know whether this is true or not until you lose it. <laughs> so the, appreciate the difference between ego attachment, to have some in the service of ego, or to really uh, appreciate seeing something without using it in the service of the ego. There's a big, a big difference. So whether it's a body or objects or abilities also, if you're good at certain, you have certain abilities, whether they are physical or you, you're very good at something, it could be playing an instrument or you're a great expert at this or that, 
And again, that's lovely. Again, the question is, are you deriving your sense of identity from it? Let's say you're a great musician, piano player, and you derive your identity from it, and then something happens. Perhaps it, something happens to your hands, and suddenly you can't play anymore. That would be, that is maybe a certain amount of pain can be involved in that. But if, if there has been an ego attachment, if if this function the, b, 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 was the main source of ego identity, you as the famous, let's say, a famous pianist, uh, then. Or let's a sports person who is very good, got a gold medal or whatever, place that, and suddenly an injury can't do it anymore. Does your whole life suddenly collapse and the rest of your life you're unhappy? You're totally defeated? It does happen to people because there is a sense of identity was exclusively derived from that great ability that they had. And, and that is the difference between appreciating it, being grateful for what you can do, but your identity needs to come from a deeper place, the, a more real place, the only real place from being, not some kind of function that, that you may be good at, because at some point, most likely, you won't be good at it anymore. And so the, the, it's very the, a huge difference between those two approaches to what you can do. Important, be careful that you don't derive your identity from something that is part of the flux of impermanence. It could leave you at any moment.